out and bring it in. Oh, okay. It is two o'clock on Thursday, December 14th, and I call the Code Enforcement Board meeting to order. Um, Madam Clerk, would you please do the roll call? Mrs. Archer? Here. <clears throat> Mr. Weeks? Here. Ms. Wade? Here. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mr. Robinson? Here. Mrs. Norfley? Here. Thank can you. I, can I have a chance to miss? Okay, we ask our um, attorney, Mr. Mora, to please in, uh, do the invocation and the pledge of allegiance. Everyone, please stand. Lord in heaven, we seek blessings on the task before us. Bless our efforts with clear insight, our deliberations with wisdom, our work with clarity and accuracy, and our decisions with impartiality. We pray that our work this afternoon will find favor in your sight. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I will now read the, um, the board hearing procedure. It is, the intent, it, is, it is the intention of this board to promote, protect, and improve the health safety and welfare of the citizens of Tarpon Springs by providing an equitable, effective, and inexpensive method of enforcing various codes within the city of Tarpon Springs. Any agreed party may appeal a final administrative order by this board to the circuit court. Such appeal shall be filed within 30 days of the execution of the order to be appealed. Florida Statute 286.0105 requires any party appealing a decision of this board to have a record of the proceedings to support such an appeal. The procedure of this board is as follows. First, the city presents its witnesses and exhibits, exhibits, after which the alleged violator is able to ask the city's witnesses any specific questions regarding their testimony. Secondly, the alleged violator is allowed to make a presentation and present his or her witnesses and exhibits. Then the city can question the alleged violator's witnesses. After both rounds of testimony, both on the part of the city and the part of the alleged violator, each party is asked to give a closing argument, first by the city and then by the alleged violator. After those three steps are taken, this board will close the public hearing portion of the case to discuss it and take appropriate action. Before we begin the public hearings, we will ask that all potential witnesses stand up and be sworn by the city by the secretary of the board. Is there anybody out here that's going to be speaking? Anybody who intends to offer testimony before this board on any issue should stand and raise their right hand. Do you swear the testimony about to give the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And we ask that you please turn off all your cell phones. I guess we're ready to go to, we're going to go right to uh, affidavits of noncompliance. The first case is 17-0000544, um, Ashland Avenue, Eurus Banchard. Is there anyone here for, for them? For this? Just let her know it's all of them. Okay. These are all of the affidavits no compliance. <coughs> Absent anybody here on behalf of five of, of the owner or property a maintain, maintenance company for 506 Ashland Avenue, uh, we would then take city uh, city staff's testimony. Mm -hmm. Officer Gasson? I have no comment. It's just uh, he's not in compliance at this point. The board have any questions? Let the record reflect that Officer Gasson has submitted affidavits of noncompliance for all the properties at issue on today's agenda.
I move based on the testimony, evidence, and facts presented in the law that respondent failed to timely comply with the board's prior order within the time prescribed, and to award the city $232 for costs inferred, incurred in the prosecuting of this case. A second. Any discussion? Okay, we're we'll asked for roll call. Ms. Norfleet? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Weeks? Yes. Ms. Way? Yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Next case. 17-8-0-0-0-0-5-5-0-1606 Gulf Road, Eris, Kizuris. Is there anyone here? Mr. Kazuras, would you like to come up to the podium? Before you come forward, sir, I don't believe you were present when we swore everybody in. Could you please raise your right hand? Oh, excuse me. Do you swear testimony about to give us whole truth and nothing but the truth, sir? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, can you state your name, sir? That is Kazuras. And what is your relationship to the pro to the ownership? Are you the property owner? Yes. Okay. The city staff is going to have an opportunity to present its case, and then you'll have an opportunity to speak as well. This is an affidavit of noncompliance, and there's also an affidavit of compliance being followed up on this. So on the date prescribed by the board, he was not in compliance. I reinspected a couple days later, and he was in compliance. And that affidavit will be submitted before the board here in the next set of business. Could you speak up, please? I'm sorry? Couldn't hear you. Don't. All I was advising is this is an affidavit of noncompliance, and he's also will also has an affidavit of compliance because he did come into compliance a couple days later. But we, also, but we have to have a... Are there any questions on the board of Officer Gasson at this time? Yes. Um, Officer Gasson is... Uh, the affidavit of prosecution cost still uh, in need by the city? I'm sorry? Are we in need of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, prosecution cost? Those are included with all of our, our cases, whether they're in compliance or not. It just, uh, it was submitted on this one. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Okay, do we have a motion? Oh, no, no, no. We need a little to find premature. in compliance and then find in compliance. The, what you're considering right now is exclusively non-compliance. Officer Gasson has testified that on the date of, of mandated compliance, the property was not yet in compliance. And so on this, uh, the city is asking for a, a finding that the property was not in compliance on the date specified by the board. Um, this one. This one. And is this a repeat violation? No, it's not. Okay. Mr. Kazuris, do you have any questions to, for the city? I didn't hear you know exactly what's going on. Talk to me, please. What? <coughs> Mr. Gus. What? He doesn't know what. I called the 30. The 30 was my time. I called the 30 to Mr. Gus in office. And I'm sorry, so sir. You'll have an opportunity to testify right now. Do you have any questions of Officer Gas and specifically relative to what he said here today? I didn't hear what he, I didn't, I didn't hear what he said. Okay. His, I compliant by 30. I, I understand, I sir. The office. I'm sorry, sir. Just one moment. Um, sorry, it, it, is, it is a process, and I'm sure that's okay, frustrating. But just to go through the process so everybody has the same, same due process okay. here. Officer Gasson's testimony is that on the date that, the, that this board's previously ordered you be in compliance, you were not in compliance yet. He has testified that after that date, you came into compliance. And so in this hearing... I believe he's stating we both have an affidavit of non-compliance and an affidavit of, of uh, compliance that will come. Is the affidavit of compliance today or, or at a later it's, hearing? It's item number 14 on okay, the agenda. Okay, so he, Officer Gasson's testimony is you are non-compliant on the date that the board required you to comply, okay. but you came into compliance shortly thereafter. That is his testimony and, the, and, and in keeping with the affidavits he submitted. Do you have any questions to him about that? Mm, questions was, was, was two or three buckets of empty paint, bucket, three buckets, which is correct. You know, he says, Mr. Kazuris, move it. And uh, 
It's more pal. Okay. Do you have a question for Officer Gasson, sir? He told me to do it, and I did it, and uh, now okay. I saw and I called his office and said, it's done. Okay. I, it sounds like you don't have a question for him about <laughs> what he said <laughs> no. at this point. So at, at this point, sir, now you can present anything you want this board to hear about your, about your, part, your property, either your property's compliance on the date re previously required. Fine. So now you can say whatever you want this board to hear, sir. Well, like I said, that's it. He, I call the 30th. Uh, Mr. Gasky is not in the office. He came uh, four days later, I believe, four days, five days. And he sees three bucket paint and a small amount of uh, shingles and uh, two slabs of uh, granite. He says, Mr. Kazuris, move it. I didn't know I have to move that to the three buckets paint. Move it. I move it. At the same day, same hour, I call back another lady. You know, the lady, the secretary says, Mr. You know, he's not here. He was uh, off. Three o'clock. That was it. And then he said to me, he says, go get the permit. I went and got the permit. Okay. For the post. It's supposed to be permit. And I, I did. And there is the permit right here. The gentleman came, the inspector came, he signed it. It's all here. So this is it. The bolt in the car, he moved, he moved the 30, which is, I had, you know, from you, from the bolt, the 30 is supposed to be moved. And they moved. Uh, does the board have any questions for Mr. Kazaris? Okay. Did he have any questions? I don't have any questions, no. Thank you. You need to summarize? Uh, very quickly, the, the board ordered November 30th. I went out. He wasn't in compliance. I met with him on the 5th of December. Uh, actually, I met with him the day before that. I told him what he needed to do, reinspected it. He was in compliance on the 5th of December. That's going to be the affidavit of compliance submitted to the board in a little bit. So we were basically out of compliance for five days. We're closed. Oh my gosh, I forgot to turn my phone off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not quite yet. He has an opportunity to. Mr. Kazouris, do you have anything else you'd like to say to summarize the facts of your case as it relates to compliance no. by November 30th? Yep. Please make take care of it, and that's it. Yep. Mr. So Gaskin, you know, I say, you know, he was not available at the time because he was busy. So I did what I did. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, this portion of the case is now closed. I'd like to entertain a motion. I move based on the testimony, evidence, facts presented in the law that at the time of the alleged violation, sections 8-22, 8-40, 8-52, 36.03 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Tarpon Springs was in full force and effect. At the time of the notice of violation, the respondents were in violation of said code sections However, they are now in compliance. That'll be for a separate time. That's a, you, you haven't heard Stop that there. enough ample evidence on that issue yet. She did not. Did you wish to? Um, the prosecution cost. If you want. I think David. first we have to violate, and then, then we no, have to go just back. one. Right. Can do it as right, one. But for, there's a separate hearing. It's still up. Okay. Okay. And the respondent failed to timely comply with the board's prior order within the time prescribed and to award the city $232. No. Nope. Excuse me. $192. For the costs incurred in prosecuting this case. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Roll call. Ms. Norfleet? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Ms. Wade? Yes. Mr. Wheat? Yes. Ms. Archer? Yes. Do you want to explain something? 
Sir, an order will be um, mailed to you based on this body's decision relative to the um, affidavit of noncompliance and the and the finding of noncompliance on November 30th. That they're not compliant? Is that what you're saying? The board has found, this body has found that you were not in compliance on November 30th, which the board previously ordered you to come in compliance by. Um, your property will, there is another part of today's hearing where the board is considering whether you came into compliance a few days later. But this board has just found that you were not in compliance on the date required, and so an order will be issued as to that finding. So what you're telling me, for the three little buckets and the two slabs, you know, granite, which is, to my knowledge, to anybody's knowledge, is that what you're finding me? Not complying, which is I did comply the 30, the bolt and the card, it was the issue. And I moved that, the 30. And I called the 30 to Mr. Gaskin's office, and the lady says he's not available to next week. Uh, I, sir, I'm, I'm telling you that that matter, the issue of your compliance on November 30th has been resolved by the board in favor of the city. Okay. You were found in non compliance on November 30th, and city staff will issue an order that you will receive by mail on that issue. Okay? And the fine is what? That you were not in compliance on November 30th in accord with this board's previous order mandating compliance and that you will be assessed whatever penalty that previous order specified along with costs totaling $192, sir. But the point is, and I didn't understand, yes. Sir, we've already had the hearing on the matter, so we're... Okay, so this is it. As it relates to that portion of it, there is a second part of the hearing later today where your property will be considered, and you're welcome to um, sit in here if there are any findings relative to that, okay? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, we'll go on to the next case. Case number 17-8-8-0000576-1400 Poinsettia. Resi Rio Sub LLC. Is there anyone here from there for that case, this case? Okay. Officer let, let the record reflect no one is present on behalf of the property owner. And Madam Chairman, this is also the case that you called in, so. Okay. Just for your record. Um, th this is an affidavit of noncompliance with the pool and the other items is still not in compliance as of uh, the date of the inspection, uh, November 23rd. And Officer Gaston, for the record, have you submitted an affidavit of noncompliance on this property to the yes, board sir, for the board? Thank you. Thank you. The board have any questions for the city? This is the pool without the fence. Yes. So you built the fence. <laughs> Okay, this, pu this will be, this public um, portion of the case is now closed. Uh, can we entertain a motion? Yes. I move based on the testimony, evidence, and facts presented in the law, respondents failed to timely comply to this board's prior order within the time prescribed and to award the city $192 for the cost incurred in prosecuting this case. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Uh, excuse me. Um, is there, there, there is a couple affidavits from previous that haven't made down here that you submitted that offered staff oh, submitted. Is this it? No, there should be a, let's say, a packet of affidavits. Mm -hmm. Did you send the whole packet at one time, sir? Yes. You did? My yeah. apologies. You were stapled together? Then I have them. <laughs> I apologize. All together? Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Um, Ms. Norfleet? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Mr. Wade? Ms. Wade? Yes. <laughs> uh, and um, Mr. Weeks? Yes. And you abstain from voting on this? Yes. Also? Thank you, ma'am. Now we're going to the affidavit of, of compliance. Now we're going on to the affidavits of compliance. Uh, I'd like to ask for a motion to accept um, the affidavits of compliance. This can. Mr. 
procedurally, you can do this individually or in, in full. Um, if you do it in full, just please make sure to read all of the case numbers um, in your motion. Should someone make a motion? I'll make a or motion. Two of them have affidavits of prosecution costs. I move that we accept the affidavits of compliance in case number 17-8000148 and in case number 17-8000228. Those two. 17. Just those two? Yep. Okay. So there's a motion to uh, approve the affidavits of compliance in cases 17 8000 and 17 Is there a second on the floor? Second. Okay. We can do this one by voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so then we need a, a motion for the. Do I read that one? Yeah, are there are there any motions relative to the remaining affidavits of compliance? Yes, I move we accept the affid the affidavit of compliance and award the city two hundred and three dollars in case number one seven dash eight zero 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 three zero five. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Are there any remaining motions on the floor relative to affidavits of compliance? I will I move that we accept the affidavits of compliance in case number 17-8000318 and in case number 17-8000327. Second. Um, all in favor, say yes. 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 Any opposed? No. Nope. Any remaining motions on the floor? I will move that we accept the affidavit of compliance and award the city $261 in case number 17-8000380. Any second? I second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass. I, I move we accept the affidavit of compliance and award the city $232 in case number 17-8000393. Second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I move we accept the affidavits of compliance in case number 17-8000407, in case 17-8000418, in case 17-8000550. In case number 17-8000618, and in case number 17-8000623. Six, uh, for clarity in the record, did you mean 632? I'm sorry, I misspoke. Okay. <laughs> yes, 632. Second. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hmm? Uh, yeah, I don't screw Here the non-compliance. We go to old business. Request for fine reduction. Case number 17-8-8000074. Nathaniel and Virginia <coughs> Crawford. Is anyone here for the? Well, I would, I would remind this board um, that fine reductions are done in writing. Under Rule 5, Section 4, you have written submission in your packet materials. Um, there's no need for testimony on these, and the board, if you feel it necessary, can ask the owner a question, but their response should be limited 
um, in scope to an, a direct response to the question and no additional narrative. Um, this is an, a situation for clarity again where you have already found noncompliance, you've already issued a penalty and they're seeking a fine reduction. And so you are, are to consider that based on the written materials before you. You can have an open discussion on the matter. <coughs> You want us to discuss it before the motion is placed? It's at your discretion. Um, I move do they that have an a fine of zero. Moment, please. Do they have an opportunity to that? No. It's on the written submissions only. And everyone's had an uh, opportunity to read the petition? Repeat, please. She asked if everybody on the board has had an opportunity to review the written petition for reduction of fines in the uh, first case, which was 17 dash eight zero 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 seven four. Okay, if so, then I'll entertain a motion. In that case, I, I move that the fine be reduced to zero. This fine reduction will occur upon payment of the stated reduced amount. If paid within 60 days of this order, failing to pay the reduced amount will revert back to the original, but I'm proposing that that fine be removed. I'm sorry, I'm a little unclear on your motion. You said to the stated reduced amount, and then you said to have the fine removed. I'm, I'm requesting that we remove the fine for this property. So reduce it to zero. Reduce it to zero. We have a second. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? I have a question. If you yeah. remember this property, um, Mr. Crawford came and he was also honored at the city for the work that he does with the city. He had some material, some, a boat and some cars and some equipment stored on his property. This is a different no? one. No. That's a different one. I thought we were talking about a sinkhole. That's a, that's a different that is, yes, we are talking about the sinkhole property. Oh, sinkhole property, okay, yeah. Uh, this is um, the, this, the written submission was submitted by Virginia Crawford and Nathaniel Crawford Sr. who were, represent themselves to be respectively 89 and 96 years old. That is the, that is the written submission yeah. before you. Yeah. So is your motion still to reduce the fine to zero dollars? Does yeah. that, okay. And there is a second on the motion was set, whoever seconded it, did you understood, Stan, that that's, this was the case you were discussing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. With um, that, the motion still remains pending. You're welcome to discuss it amongst yeah. the body. Anybody else have a? Yeah. Go ahead. Sir. This says no work was completed for five years but they received an insurance settlement for it five years ago. Is that correct? Yes, that's what it says. Yeah, that's what it says. That's what officers are testifying to. And I agree with what this says, that they did receive uh, insurance, they did receive a settlement, and... Um, Nothing was paid towards it. Is the owner or applicant present today? Okay. Um, if if you have any questions of them, that you can come down to answer those questions. But your anything you say will be limited to direct responses to questions. Does this board have any questions for the individuals present on behalf of the applicant? Yes. Okay. With that, would one of one or both of you please come down? And they haven't been sworn yet either. No, I know. In the interest of uh, in the interest of being thorough, um, I don't believe either of you were sworn earlier. Could you please raise your right hands? Do you swear to testimony you're about to give us full truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Let the record reflect both have affirmed um, the this the oath. And at this point, if this body has any questions of these individuals, you may ask them. When y'all were here before, you indicated that you were making progress in getting the structure raised. Has that have you come forward with anything on that? Yes, we've already completed everything in compliance with what the city requested us to do. Officer Gaston? Yes, ma'am. Is that a question for me? The building's been raised, the property's in compliance. That's why. That's why we're at reduction. this phase. You cannot yeah. consider a reduction of fine until a property is in compliance. So this is purely, they've come into compliance, a fine has been assessed, they've petitioned that the fine be reduced, you've moved that that be that that fine be changed from whatever it's specified amount to $0. Yep. Um, if you have any questions, if this body has any questions that will assist you in voting on that motion, you can certainly ask. 
It's not here. What, what, what's the amount of the, the fines? Fine. The amount of the fine is $1,675. And there was no prosecution cost. Any more questions? No. Call for a vote. Ms. Norfleet? Yes. Mr. Robinson? No. Mr. Kramer? No. Ms. Wade? Yes. That ended that. Mr. Wade? No. Mrs. Archer? No. That failed. Your request, uh, the, the petition to reduce the fines has failed by a vote of, I believe, four to two. Uh, with that, the fine remains in place. And that resolves the matter today. Um, and we would move on to the next item on the agenda. Thank you, folks, for taking the time to come forward and offer your. Okay, case number 17 0 143 at 316 East Boyer Street, Apartment A, EM uh, Real Estate Development. Is anyone here for them? Um, and, and just as in the last case, if you have questions of them, uh, you can ask, but at this time, uh, first, I would recommend that, uh, um, well, actually, there's no, if, if you, does this board have any questions of the individuals here on behalf, for this applicant, application? Okay, there's no need at this point for them to come down. Again, you can have an open discussion based on the written materials submitted to you and any response submitted in writing by the city. Again, this is on the property at, Seven, uh, 316 East Boyer Street, Apartment A. Just pass down a little bit. And has everybody had a chance to read the petition? Yes. Okay, uh, Let the record reflect all have responded in the affirmative. Are we ready for a vote? What, well, you the, don't have a motion yet. Uh, first, what's you the fines amount? I'm sorry, motions. <laughs> The total fine, including on um, prosecution costs, is 36700 I'm sorry, say that again? <clears throat> I'm sorry, sir. Including prosecution costs is $36,679. How did we arrive at 36000 whatever you just said? Because... Um, Board ordered a compliance date of of April twenty um, eighth, and um, let's see the daily fine was I believe it was two fifty. Well, it was two hundred. It was two hundred fifty dollars per day until the um, property did come in compliance. Compliance date was um, September twenty second, twenty seventeen. So it's in compliance, and those were daily approved. $250 per day, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, any other? Do we have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Let me find the case number first. I don't get screwed up. Uh, I'll make a motion uh, in case number 17-8000143 um, on the request for fine reduction. I, I make the motion that we do not reduce the fine. Second. Any discussion? Call for the question. Roll call. Ms. Norfleet. Yes. Mr. Robertson? Yes. Mr. Kramer? Yes. Ms. Wade? Yes. Mr. Weeks? Yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Motion carries to deny them. Motion okay. carries, and just for clarity in the record, that the motion was to uh, deny the request, and so this body by unanimous vote has decided to deny the request. That concludes the hearing on the reduction of fines for that property. Can I see my hand? Thank you. Okay. The, Agenda. Next case is a request to eliminate prosecution costs. 
Case number 17-8000497. VL <laughs> oh, East of 528 Martin Luther King. I share James Williams. Okay. Um, as we continue on this, I'd like to clarify. This is um, this body has already already voted not to impose a fine on this property, but you did award prosecution costs of $163 plus a satisfaction fee of $10, so at $173. This is a bit unorthodox. Typically, you're considering fine reductions. In this case, they're asking you to now waive the cost that you vote, affirmatively voted to impose. Um, this procedure is not explicitly set out in your rules, um, but if you choose to treat this as a, as a request for reduction of fine, that's at your discretion. Um, if, if you do that, you do have written submission before you to consider, uh, and, and that's all I would say at that point. Do we have any discussion? Any questions? Does anybody have any questions that they would, is there an owner, anybody here on behalf of the owner? Okay. Does anybody have any questions they need to ask of the owner or representative in order to um, decide on this matter? Seeing none on the board, I tender it back to you, Chair. We have a motion. Does anyone care to make a motion? I move that the, it's not a fine, it's a prosecution. Correct. Correct. I move that the prosecution costs incurred in this case number 17-8000497 remain in play. And the, what about the satisfaction fee of $10? And the satisfaction fee of $10. Does it come out to one seventy-three? One seventy-three. So $173. The motion on the floor is that the prosecution costs totaling $173 remain in place. Is there I'll, a second? I'll second that. Any other discussion? Roll call. Ms. Norfleet? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mr. Um, Kramer? Yes. Ms. Wade? Yes. Mr. Weeks? Yes. Mrs. Archer? Yes. Body's vote is unanimous. The cost of $173 for this subject property remains in place. We don't have any minutes to approve, so go to public comment. Anybody wishing to offer public comment on a matter that has not already been considered today, please come forward and do so. Okay. Board and staff comments? Officer Gasson? Um, I'd like to bring before the board a discussion regarding time limits for public comments. Can you speak just a little bit louder so we can hear you better? How's this? Great. Better. <laughs> uh, to bring before the board to discuss uh, time limits on public comments and limiting them similar to how the Board of Commissioners limits the public comments to a fixed period of time. I'd like to support that suggestion. I would suggest four minutes, but that's uh, obviously up to the board because that follows what BOC allows. Mm -hmm. So the, if they're, well, the, the staff has asked that this board consider imposing a new procedural requirement that public comment be limited to four minutes per speaker. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. In that case, it's now up to this board to consider whether or not it wishes to do so. Um, it could change that. You can change that in your discussion if you think that's too little or too much time. But the staff from a uh, bottom up, if you will, request is asked that you consider an amendment to your procedures. Any discussion on it? I have a question. Is this is this after all questions have been asked? So this is just a, a voluntary four minutes after all the other questions have been asked. Clarity and yeah, request. it would be the it would be the public comment section typically like we're entertaining right now after the case has been heard. It's not so much limiting because um, the board can already limit the the scope of time during uh, the question and answer period of the case itself. So this is the public comment part. So it has nothing to do with the procedure when you are in the midst of considering a case. So if someone for some reason needs a lot or a little bit of time to present the why they are in compliance or why they came into compliance when they did, that's not what this is about. This is just for the open comments at the end of the meeting, which we would have just had had somebody spoken up. Um, because I've not been here but one 
meeting, <clears throat> which was a lengthy one, um, does does four minutes usually cover enough time for public comment? It, it seems to work fairly well for the Board of Commissioners, and so that's kind of why I'm just following along with that. Can that time limit be placed also during testimony or not? Um, you can put rules of procedure uh, for testimony. I would suggest that at present with the, the request before you being limited to public comment, that that be the only issue you consider. I understand. Um, to the extent the board member was looking in my direction as a municipal attorney who represents multiple boards, this is, whether or not is enough is subjective, but I can tell you this is a customary time limit often placed on open public comment. Do we need to vote on this? Yes, the, uh, you need to give direction so a voice vote would suffice. Um, to to address whether or not you want to move forward and the motion should specify if you are putting in place a time limit it precisely what that time is Okay, someone want to make the motion that we limit our public comments to four minutes I make a motion that we limit our Public comment to four minutes. I'll second Any discussion any more discussion uh, All in favor say aye Aye. 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 All Opposed? Carries unanimously. And Madam Chairman, I had one other discussion item for the board, which was uh, our initially we had attempted to schedule some training since we do have some new board members. Obviously, we have a new chairperson. Um, and we were unable to this month because uh, Mr. Trask was unavailable. So I'd like to ask the board to consider possibly maybe adding a date or some other way of, of having a couple hours where we could do some training uh, when Mr. Trask is available. So obviously we'd have to go through his office as well, but um, we can cover procedurally and some things that make uh, the process work a little better. I think that's a very good idea. You want to have a discussion, Bob? You don't, need a, you don't need a motion or second on this. This is really just more of a consensus. Mm -hmm. Staff is seeking consensus on whether it should move forward with coordinating this process. So by consensus, you would communicate to them one way or the other. Can we add the discussion on a time limit during testimony or not? Um, but we already did that. Already no, did she, that. Her, no she, was, she was making the distinction between a time limit during open public comment and a time limit during a presentation of a case in chief. So when public comment is just for the open, I just want to talk about something or talk about an issue that I think you haven't considered today. Um, the board member is proposing that we can that this board um, is, is asking about setting a discussion at some point for discussing when somebody's presenting their case that they can't go beyond a certain time limit in. This is just because to me it doesn't seem like the public comment is when we get bogged down it's during the testimony that goes on for extended periods of time. Um, I'm going to say a few things on that. Uh, one, um, it, it is not without precedent to do that. However, given that, one, I'm not your typical board attorney. Two, this is a new issue presented today. I would recommend that if you consider that good. issue, um, you coordinate with staff on raising it at a later meeting okay. um, especially as you consider the issue of training it may inform your decisions on that um, so no that's problem. it's totally your prerogative but that's my recommendation I understand accepted okay so in that the staff is still seeking consensus one way or the other relative to training we we are interested feel about having training with uh, some at, so, at some point people here yeah. just I would need some direction from the board um, as moving forward, would you want to do it during a regularly scheduled board meeting? Or my suggestion would be is if we can get a consensus to maybe an additional date that's outside of the, because our you can see our board meetings are fairly I've got full. The way our meetings have been going yes, <laughs> pretty long, I think it would be a good idea to uh, do a different Date, set different and obviously, date. I would suggest after the first of the year and after the holidays are all done and all that. So. Can I go with everybody? No, couldn't hear any of it. The okay, so the staff is simply asking that the, the general consensus seems to be to have a training. The only request staff was making that is that it, that training happened at a separate meeting, a special session okay. uh, for that purpose. 
so as not to put too much business into one day and to make that the focal point of the meeting. Staff has recommended that we find an additional date during one of the months after the new year for staff to go or for the board to, and staff to engage in that training. So it just uh, is there consensus on that point? Yes. 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 Okay. Got a full consent? So I'll put together some date options and present them um, probably via email. Um, and then at that point, we'll, we'll go through the procedure to, to create a, an agenda item for a special session. Sounds good. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Does the uh, city have anything that I have nothing like further other than happy holidays. <laughs> okay. Anyone on the board? Happy holidays. <laughs> yeah, this is fairly normal. And Merry Christmas. Too. Merry Christmas. Yeah, I'd like to wish everyone um, a Merry Christmas. And are we meeting next month? Mm -hmm. Adam, Madam Clerk, the question is to impose if there's a meeting scheduled for next month? month. To my knowledge, yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, right. January 11th. Oh. So we seek a motion to adjourn. I have the motion. Yeah, seek a motion to adjourn. Or, or you can do it. No, okay, then that's fine. <laughs> so this is fine. Okay. Okay, seeing there's no other board uh, business on the agenda, uh, I adjourn the meeting at um, 2.45. We are adjourned. Thank you, folks. Oh.